Hello, Douglas Butner here, your fractally fractal 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 and about. I'm here to talk to you about what we can do to improve fractal governance. And we're currently working with fractally platform learning from all the processes there. So that's what we're going to dive into. Point one. I talked today with James Smart trying to ask about what the sort of contributions were um, that he made in code this week, which I think is super important. And I'm very happy to report he said that they were working on a token. Um, but this raised a, an important point, which gets back to the reason why I'm saying all these things is because we need to have feedback at every level. So my question is, is this token compatible with the EOSIO.token standard? Um, and asking that sort of very blunt question, I didn't get quite a concrete answer back, um, but I got the general idea that it is different from the EOSIO.token standard. Now, I tried to stress the point that if you make a token standard that's different from the um, EOSIO.token, meaning it doesn't have the actions like uh, open, issue, transfer, retire, um, these sort of standard actions, if we don't have that, then the token will not work with any existing swap or trade platform. So what that would mean is we would be getting a token that would be not useful for anything. We couldn't trade it on the existing exchanges, making us dependent upon a centralized entity to create these contracts and create these sort of things. Um, <coughs> sorry. Now, from what I've seen in the white paper, this is not necessary. Um, it's not described. It, there's no reason to do it. Uh, although, because things are open, it does make sense that there would be some sort of alternative system. But I, I think that it doesn't really make much sense for us not to be developing on EOSIO. Um, and as far as I could tell, the smart contracts they're working on would be C++ um, as we are now, um, because I believe that that's what he said that they were working in. So yeah, it's really important, guys, that every, every fractally member understands that um, these code things are important because if they're developing a contract that is not compliant with EOSIO.token, we can't use it. Um, so this is why it's so important at every phase of iteration to do this in public so we can have this sort of feedback. And I certainly hope that it was a failure in communication between James and I um, with my questioning as far as compatibility versus you know, extensibility of this EOSIO.token contract. I hope that it was, a it was a miscommunication and they are building something compliant that we can use. Uh, but we don't know that without the code. Um, so yeah, that's the first point. Second point, there was an amazing contribution um, that I, I really hope that people step up and, and somebody at the Fractally team, Dan, somebody else, you know, says, hey, this is what we're using. Um, so just to explain a little bit, like it's a software that this guy developed and you can pick which person you win, which person you think is the top contributor. And then once there's consensus, we move to the next round. Um, I think that's super, super powerful. Uh, and I would like to see direction from the top from Dan to say, this is what we're going to use next week. Um, unfortunately, I got confirmation from Dan that that is not what he was open to do. Um, meaning that we're not learning in my definition of iterative processes by uh, the central unit declaring this is what we're testing right now. Um, this is something I think is absolutely vital. It's something I've spoken on several times. I'm not gonna get upset. Uh, I, I've, I've stepped into new sort of awareness of myself and learning to love myself and respect myself and value myself. And once I realize how much I, I, I do value myself, I do value everything that I do, um, I don't seek that sort of validation, that sort of value on my systems uh, that I might have otherwise, even if it was subconsciously. So um, I will be developing and building these systems. We're starting with the CXE tribe tomorrow is our first meeting. Uh, but beyond that, I'm going to keep building. And I'm not going to be complaining, but I will be trying to flutter my wings to push fractal governance forward more than I'm pecking with my beak to try to flip some leaf over so that this wind will take hold. Um, that being said, I, I do implore you as a fractally member to echo these things that I'm saying, echo these concerns until we have fractal governance in fractally. That's all I got guys, it's a beautiful Saturday here in Medellin. I'm gonna go get into some trouble, hopefully not. No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go enjoy the day. Um, but thank you for being here with me. I definitely had a great meeting um, as well as I feel 
I feel good about how I presented myself and how I acted in this meeting. Um, I know that I've presented some very critical feedback in the past week, sometimes in the not nicest way, but that is, you know, I do apologize for that. That is not my true vibration. Um, and I don't want to carry forward that vibration, which I've said before, uh, but it's still, it's an iter iterative process in my life. And I think that I did a little bit better this week in explaining my ideas in both a more targeted factual basis way by proving that the fractally government um, via on-chain votes was moving against, uh, against valuing contributions to code that was written in the white paper. So um, yeah, I, I really hope that I can sort of, instead of focusing on things like that, I can sort of, sort of lead by example or if, if I can't lead by example because I'm not giving that power, I can at least lead by asking questions of, of if people will act according to the example I set out. And that's what I did to Dan when I asked him, are you willing to, to put this, this contribution by Gore? Um, are you willing to say that that is, is what we're gonna use next week? And Dan was unable to do that, um, which I, I do understand like his philosophical argument. I also understand the psychological um, feeling of being overwhelmed by too much work when you do want to take a responsibility. So I do understand Dan's thought process, but I also understand how that thought process is inhibiting us from uh, exhibiting fractal governance that is a true collective fractal of contributions of the member, which would be really beautiful if that's what we were building here, is, is a true collaborative system built from the collaborative system itself. Um, it's been too long, I've been rambling, but I love you guys, um, seriously, really do, and really appreciate every single person being here from the bottom of my heart. Like, even if we were doing anything else, I would appreciate just learning from you and seeing your point of views. Um, as well as there was another guy, oh man, I forget his name, but at the end with the questions he was asking Dan, it wasn't Jason, it was um, an, another one. Sorry, I, I committed his name to memory and I forgot. Uh, but yeah, so, so you, I'll be contacting you, you know who you are. Um, I, I do appreciate everything that all the people that are pushing and, and, and really sort of uh, making it vocal about what we think we need to do. And, and as soon as we can start, getting that, that, that click from up top that we can keep going and make this a fractal, it's gonna be amazing and, and I'll be there with you. Peace.